welcome to another episode of Incoming. This is the Sci-Fi and Fantasy Edition, which looks back at the week's Sci-Fi and Fantasy miniature releases. This is episode 16, which is looking back at the miniature releases for week ending the 22nd of January 2010. And as always, I'm your host, Neil Shuck. It's been an interesting week for Sci-Fi and Fantasy miniature releases, and my top 10 this week aren't necessarily the best set of 10 miniatures that have been released this week, but they're... The 10 that most caught my eye, or I most wanted to comment on anyway. So possibly a slightly more controversial top 10 in this particular week. Oh, and this top 10 is guaranteed Dwarf 3. So first up, we have an interesting release from Thompson 77, uh, a German company that specialises in releasing vehicles. And weird and wonderful vehicles at that. As soon as I saw this one, I'm not quite sure exactly what I thought about it, other than possibly... Oh dearie me. This is a wooden tank. Uh, it's based on the A7V German tank from World War One, Except, of course, it's wooden. And therefore, it's really aimed at the Empire steam tank sort of genre. A very strange beast is all I can say. Possibly something you'd have in, as I say, something like an Empire army. Maybe a dwarf army, dare I suggest. Strangely appealing figure, but uh, just bizarre. Number nine, a slightly more conventional release. Uh, this is the first view we've got of the new Alvin Cavalry from Mantic. And these have definitely caused uh, several comments this week. Good and bad things here, I think. First of all, I really like the horses. I think they look really good. The riders are okay. I do like the fact they're, they're posed with uh, their cloaks billowing out behind them they look pretty good as far as that's concerned the weaponry is awful i mean seriously poor and these aren't so much lances as tree drugs you're just looking at the way they're holding them i mean you know in real life you just simply wouldn't be able to hold on to something that thick i mean in real life i mean i know it's a fantasy figure but you know i think we've all seen enough cavalry armed with spears or lances to know what looks good and what looks bad. And I just don't get these at all. And finally, as I think several people have already pointed out, I think Mantic have really missed a trick here in the fact that these are metal. You know, at the point where everybody's seeming to go plastic and they've released a pretty decent plastic release with their infantry. To then go and produce cavalry in metal, I think is a very strange step. I don't know, maybe they think that the tooling cost isn't worth how much they get back for the figures. And obviously you you don't seem to have anywhere near as many cavalry figures in a fantasy army as you do in an historical army. I mean, compare that to something like Perry's with their American Civil War or Napoleonic Ranges, where you have lots of cavalry. So maybe that's their thinking. But I'm really surprised that these are metal. So a very mixed release, this, from Mantic. Number eight, and a release from Zombie Smith. Uh, This is almost cheating, as it's... uh, a group of miniatures that they've released this week. This is a, uh, a group of aliens for their 28 mil sci-fi range. And generally, I mean, these look really good. Lots of variety. Look well sculpted. Yeah, I think there's lots to appeal here. Plus, especially if you're looking for lots of alien bystanders and stuff in your games. I think this is a release to certainly keep an eye on. Number seven, and my favourite of this week's releases from Reaper. They, as always, have had a pretty prolific release. With several new miniatures. As I said, this is my favourite, which is Kira, which is a female iconic cleric. Looks to be of the some sort of Eastern religion. And whilst the pose is very stereotypical, I think, for a cleric, I really enjoy the detailing on this figure. I just think he's got a really nice look and feel. So that's my favourite Reaper miniature of this week. Solid enough for release. For my number six this week... As soon as I saw this particular miniature release from Zenit, it made my skin crawl. And you'll have to pardon the pun on that one. This is a flesh golem. And, oh, it's horrible, isn't it? In a really good way. <laughs> no, as I say, this is something that I looked at it and went, Ugh. which for a flesh golem is really good. I was really impressed with it. It's one of the best of these particular type of miniatures I've seen. I think it's much better than the Flesh Golem I've seen from the likes of GW, for example. A nice miniature release, if you're into that sort of thing. 
Number five, and it's back to Mantic. The big thing this week have been Mantic have been uh, their releases of Undead. Their Undead Army is now available to buy. And we've also got a look at a couple of their upcoming releases. Here we have a catapult, which is looking very military, actually, for a Scarlet Army. And then you've got a set of ghouls as well, which I think are really nice. They're probably one of the better sets from their Undead that I've seen. Obviously, the, the second army release from Mantic and shaping up to be a good one. And number four, a new release which we almost came into last week, but is actually physically released this week, although we had a preview of it last week. This is from Kingdom Death, one of their new adventurers. This is a saviour. Very nice female model, this. Part of their resin range. Very well sculpted again. Lovely detailing. Really nice facial work, I think. Another fine model from Kingdom Death. Every model I've seen so far from this company has been of a very high standard. A company well worth a look. Let's say, that's the saviour. Number three, we have one of Hasselfree's new releases for this week. Originally due out in November, but now released in January. This is my favourite of their batch of releases. This is a guy called Oakley. Uh, another one of their kind of zombie hunter sort of characters, I suppose. With loads of weapon options, you've got a fire axe, a samurai sword... A shotgun and a chainsaw. What more could you possibly want? <laughs> yes, a really tooled up zombie hunter. Uh, and another great sculpt from Kev White. Number two. And a new set of releases from Microart Studios. This is actually from their Discworld range. And this week, amongst other things, we've seen a release of The Three Witches on Broomsticks. Obviously, you've got Granny Weatherwax, Nanny Og and Margaret. The Three Witches from the Weird Sisters series of novels. Now, I must admit, I've kind of been a bit up and down with a lot of Michael Watts releases for Discworld. Some, such as Death, The Luggage, The Librarian, and possibly Rincewind, have been pretty much as you imagine them. Others, and I'd include The Witches in this particular comment, are maybe not quite as I originally imagined them. Obviously, it's very difficult, especially when you're working off a series of books that have been so brilliantly illustrated by Josh Kirby in the past. Yeah, I think Michael Arts have been very brave in taking this whole franchise on and maybe reimagining some of the characters in a way you might not expect, but are nonetheless still in keeping with the characters as they're described in the book. And I'm kind of warming to this range more and more as I see it. But one thing you can't take away from it is the fact that they're really fantastic figures. Brilliantly sculpted. And so, from which is on to my number one, and it's Avatars of War. And what's this? We've got an orc at number one. I can't be right. And what an orc. <laughs> I mean, one thing Avatar kind of pride themselves on doing, as well as obviously producing miniatures for their own particular game, is looking at using their miniatures as the big character models in your army. And what gamer with an orc army would not want this miniature as their leader? Orc Warlord on a war bore. Just look at this absolutely stunning figure. I mean, as I commented with their Slayer from a couple of weeks ago, you, know, you can really see the Games Workshop style of influence in the figure that they're sculpting. You know, it looks somewhat like a Games Workshop orc. A similar sort of build and style. I just think it's a stunning miniature. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Great work from our Avatars of War. Highly recommended. And I think my number one miniature of this week by a mile. And that's all we have time for this week. A little bit of a more down week this week. Not so many really fantastic figures, I think, on show. But some interesting stuff all the same. And I hope you've seen something that you like. So, just before I go, I'd just like to say a big thank you to Zach at Tabletop Gaming News and Bill at the Miniatures page. Without these guys, this podcast simply wouldn't be possible. And of course, if you want to catch up on all episodes, go and see them on Warboots TV. So that's all I have time for. Just wrap up by saying, take care, happy gaming. Thank you ever so much for watching, and I'll catch up with you next week. Bye.